My health struggles started probably way back in high school. I was diagnosed with diabetes at 18, um, also high blood pressure, and that led to my chronic kidney disease and ultimately end-stage kidney failure. Um, I was diagnosed in 2012, and I had to start dialysis about two years after that. And um, I was on dialysis for almost five years uh, until I received a kidney transplant three days before um, the new year. Um, those five years, or near five years, were extremely hard because uh, kidney failure plays havoc on your body completely. And dialysis, though it's a means of treatment um, to sustain your life, it, it really takes pretty much all of your energy. Um, a lot of times you may be sick. I wound up in the hospital a bunch of times and um, it felt impossible a lot of times and it was my faith in God that kept me from giving up. Um, for anybody who's going through this at the moment, um, I would uh, just tell you to hang in there, um, do what your doctors are telling you and do all that you can to um, get healthy. You know, eat right, exercise, take your medicines on time, don't miss any dialysis treatments. And um, you know, the more you stay the course, you will get through this. You will, you know, if you, if you need a, a kidney transplant, do all you can to get on the list and also um, talk to your friends and family. See if they're even considering um, maybe being a, do a donor for you because that's also a possibility. And a living kidney donor is actually um, better than a deceased donor because the kidneys normally last a bit longer or a lot longer. Um, it, it was a very unique day. I couldn't sleep that morning and um, I just began praying and I told God that day I wanted to see a miracle for myself. And about five hours after that, I got a phone call from the hospital that uh, there was a potential kidney at the hospital for me. There was someone waiting in front of me. Um, so I just began to pray for that person. I began to pray for um, the deceased donor who was given you know, that, that blessing of life. And I waited, you know, I had to do a dialysis treatment that day and, and I just waited and waited and I got another phone call to get to the hospital. And um, at that moment, I just began to weep because, you know, almost five years of four days a week being hooked up to a machine to clean your blood and sustain your life. And it was all getting ready to be over. And I just couldn't believe that I was actually witnessing the miracle that I had just prayed for. I think they have to remember to take care of themselves first and foremost because if they don't then they can't help the person that's in need um, so having a, a a circle of people who you can be accountable to people you can pray with um, people that will pray for you all of those things are very important because I, as a caregiver my wife got tired a lot of times and, you know, I was physically tired. I was emotionally drained a lot of times. And, and, and a lot of times I just really had nothing to give her when she needed support. So I, I think you really have to build a network or, or a community of people because it's just not an easy job to do by yourself. Um, I would say for one thing, the, the, the biggest thing is avoidance. So if you can avoid um, dealing with kidney disease, kidney failure, anything like that. Do all that you can in the beginning to take care of yourself. It was a lot of things that I didn't understand growing up that played detriment to my kidneys. Diabetes, high blood pressure, um, the food choices that we make, you know, high sodium foods and all of those, um, it, it, it wreaked havoc on my kidneys to the point that, you know, I wound up in this state. So if you can do all you can in the beginning of your life and your teenage years, do research on your family history, you know, all of that stuff, it plays a great role of importance on your future. Um, so avoidance is the key. Exercise, drink plenty of water, eat the right food, stay away from the processed foods and all of that. And hopefully you'll never have to endure um, some of the things many of us go through because kidney failure is really an epidemic not only in this country, but globally. Um, yes, I am um, starting a nonprofit uh, called First Love Ministries. Um, I've been doing a video blog since November 30th. Um, every Friday, it's called First Love Friday. 
The, the um, nonprofit is geared towards people who are physically sick, spiritually sick, and we just want to be able to uplift people, encourage them, and believe that um, not only can you be healed, um, your faith increasing will aid to you being healed. So we want to go out to the hospitals, pray with people, provide food for families, um, you know, because going to the hospital day in and day out for a loved one, it can be quite costly, parking, food, everything. So hopefully we'll get to a point where we can uh, provide parking money, provide food, um, you know, even go to the shelters and, you know, help, help hopefully help people um, pay for medications or whatever the case may be, but we just want to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. And um, that's what we're doing. BreakthroughMag.com